I found myself absently pulling at long ear hairs that sprouted up from out of nowhere after I passed the age of 40. That plus owl eyebrows made me realize something. I'm not actually balding. My hair is just relocating to different parts of my body. The Progressive Magazine, Mother Jones, has an article entitled, Inside the Right Wing YouTube Empire That's Quietly Turning Millennials into Conservatives. The premise of the article is completely wrong. Dennis Prager and his YouTube channel, PragerU, aren't turning millennials conservative. Aging is. The oldest millennials turned 40 this year. Mark Penn, who's a Democratic pollster and strategist, wrote a book called Microchand Squared. In it, he, as a Democrat, admits that Democrats lose voters as they age. The fact that he admits that the DNC is a coalition of various demographics with short-term thinking is astonishing. He says that as people mature, their brain finishes wiring at around the age of 25. After that, they go from short-term thinking to long-term thinking. Once people start to concentrate less on self-indulgent short-term gains and cast their gaze out into the future, their values and priorities change, especially after they have children and settle down. As they shift from present-centric to future-centric thinking, they shift over to the Republicans. In the book, Shop Class is Soulcraft, Matthew Crawford writes, It seems to be our liberal political instincts that push us in the direction of centralized authority. We distrust authority in the hands of individuals. With its reverence for neutral process, liberalism is by design a politics of irresponsibility. This statement, that liberalism is by design a politics of irresponsibility, reminded me of a video on Socrates and why he distrusted democracy. The founding father of Greek philosophy, Socrates, is portrayed in the dialogues of Plato as hugely pessimistic about the whole business of democracy. In Book 6 of The Republic, Plato describes Socrates falling into conversation with a character called Adimantus and trying to get him to see the flaws of democracy by comparing a society to a ship. If you were heading out on a journey by sea, asks Socrates, who would you ideally want deciding who was in charge of the vessel? Just anyone or people educated in the rules and demands of seafaring? The latter, of course, says Adimantus. So why then, responds Socrates, do we keep thinking that any old person should be fit to judge who should be the ruler of a country? Socrates' point is that voting in an election is a skill, not a random intuition. And like any skill, it needs to be taught systematically to people. Letting the citizenry vote without an education is as irresponsible as putting them in charge of a trireme sailing to Samos in a storm. Ancient Athens had painful experience of demagogues. For example, the louche figure of Alcibiades, a rich, charismatic, smooth-talking, wealthy man who eroded basic freedoms and helped to push Athens to its disastrous military adventures in Sicily. Socrates knew how easily people seeking election could exploit our desire for easy answers. He asked us to imagine an election debate between two candidates, one who was like a doctor and the other who was like a sweet shop owner. The sweet shop owner would say of his rival, Look, this person here has worked many evils on you. He hurts you, gives you bitter potions, and tells you not to eat and drink whatever you like. He'll never serve you feasts of many and varied pleasant things like I will. Socrates asks us to consider the audience's response. Do you think the doctor would be able to reply effectively? The true answer, I cause you trouble and go against your desires in order to help you, would cause an uproar among the voters, don't you think? We have forgotten all about Socrates' salient warnings against democracy. The example just given articulates the difference between a politician and a statesman. A statesman has long-term thinking, and like the Native Americans, considered how a policy would affect people seven generations into the future. The politician, by contrast, is a charlatan, a con man. His only interest is in staying in power and enriching himself. Toward that end, he'll promise the people anything from the treasury to bribe his way into power. As Socrates said, the sophist says what is popular, the philosopher says what is true. This can be equally applied to the politician and the statesman. The politician says what is popular, the statesman says what is true. To have a republic, you require statesmen. To have a democracy, by contrast, you have politicians. And mere politicians like manipulating the ignorant to acquire political power, which is why Kamala Harris was advocating for lowering the voting age to 16 to take advantage of people whose brains weren't done wiring yet. Hi, Senator. Hi, Rachel. The past couple of years have seen young people getting involved in politics and activism, organizing around issues such as gun control and climate change. Given that policies passed now will affect the younger generation for years to come, do you believe that Americans should have the right to vote at age 16? I'm really interested in having that conversation. 
I have to tell you that. Um, I think that there is no question that um, if we are looking at what is going on in our country, we are putting more responsibilities on people at a younger age. And um, the larger number of people that we can involve in the electoral process, um, I think the more robust it would be. I think one of the, the, the downsides of the way that our system is currently um, constructed but you know, thanks to CNN for doing this town hall with students, is that if people don't vote or they don't write checks, they don't get heard. And I believe strongly that you can judge a society based on how it treats its children. And um, you can look at what we are not doing for our students, for our teenagers, and even younger. And I believe that if they had greater political power, maybe we would get our act together Mm -hmm. a little bit better than we've been doing, and maybe that's one of the steps toward it. After advocating for young people to vote, she then makes an admission. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. If people 18 to 24 are stupid, as Ms. Harris says, then what does that say about 16-year-olds? Why would you want stupid people to vote? Maybe because they're easier to trick and manipulate, like when they lied to them and told them that if they voted for Joe Biden, he would cancel their student loan debt. Then once in power, he reneged on that campaign promise. Like in the Socrates example, you can promise them candy instead of medicine. Just the same technique that creepy men in white vans use. We need less government, more responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. That's what the John Birch Society is all about. Check them out at jbs.org.